Welcome to the 2021 Annual Gunnison Big Game Update. I am Kevin Blecka, a CPW terrestrial biologist stationed in Gunnison, Colorado. This presentation was also put together with our local Area 16 Wildlife Manager, Brandon Diamond. If you tuned in last year, I gave a pretty extensive rundown of how we manage big game herds here in Gunnison. But this year, I'm going to make it short and sweet and focus on some good news with regard to the big game here in the Gunnison Basin. Currently, Gunnison big game populations appear to be in a bit of a reproductive boom. And this is measured by surveying the ratio of young of the year to the number of adult females. It's expressed in the number of fawns per 100 does or with elk, the number of calves per 100 cows. This is often conducted above, from above with helicopters or with pronghorn, we do ground surveys. And we don't need to survey every animal every year uh, or every animal in the herd at all, and doing so would be impossible. So it's based on a representative sample of the population um, that we're uh, surveying. So for example, um, for these ratios, Gunnison averages 52 fawns per 100 does at the winter start. And the great news is that we are well above our average ratios going into this current winter of 2020-2021, this winter that we're basically wrapping up now. So over the course of the year, this ratio is changing. It's generally only declining from the time that the young are born. Those that survive the first 12 months of life are then considered recruited as adults. And so on this graph here, I've got June through May, kind of shows the biological calendar year for an animal. Uh, right here, uh, this blue arrow pointing at the red line shows when our helicopter surveys are conducted. And for this year, we are at about 90 fawns per 100 does, shown on the red line where the blue arrow meets. And on average, between 2008 and 2020, we are seeing We've been seeing 50 fonts per 100 does. Now going back to June, you can see that we have got 180 fonts per 100 does at the time of birth. We didn't actually survey that, um, but we do know that given each doe is producing on average 1.8 fonts, uh, we can get that ratio estimate. Now just before the helicopter surveys uh, in late winter are done, we deploy radio collars on a sample of fawns. And uh, we've been doing this since about December 2008, January 2009. And these collars basically let us measure what the herd's re recruitment rate is for the winter period. Uh, because given that our helicopter surveys are for the fawn ratios are done at the beginning, we really don't know what proportion survived. So for the 13 years we've done the radio collar monitoring, we're averaging about 35 fawns per 100 does making it to adulthood, shown in that blue line. But if we zoom in to those last months of winter, what is really interesting about this year, uh, the red line, is that if you compare it to the fawns per 100 does we usually have, we've got about 100% more fawns that are going to be recruited into adulthood than our average. These high ratios didn't just happen in mule deer, but also in Gunnison's small pronghorn herd, uh, which just hit a little over 40 fawns per 100 does this last summer when surveyed. Normally, this pronghorn herd is averaging just under 30 fawns per 100 does, and it's actually uh, got some of the poorest production rates in the state of Colorado. This pattern also held for bighorn sheep where near record land to U ratios were observed and January helicopter surveys of four of the bighorn GMUs managed out of the Gunnison office. Now, not too long ago, uh, these herds were measuring only about 10 to 20 lambs per 100 ewes in certain years. But this year, uh, we're in that 40 to 60 lambs per 100 ewe range. And ditto for elk. All three Gunnison elk herds were above the average hitting 40 to 60 calves per 100 cows, depending on the herd. Now normally our local elk herds are at about 40 calves per 100 cows. And so what about adults? Uh, so just like our radio colored sample of fawns, we also have radio colors on adult female deer and adult female elk. Luckily the mild winter conditions lately are keeping those adult survival rates higher than average. The blue line here is the survival rate for does over the annual period as monitored with radio collars. 
And since we started measuring this in 2008, uh, winter of 2009, the average has been 82%. And we were well above that in 2020 with a 90% survival rate. So I know that a difference of eight percentage points doesn't sound like much, uh, but given that the adult does are the biological drivers uh, of our populations, this is a pretty significant increase. Also shown here in the red line is the fawn overwinter survival rate, uh, fluctuates quite a bit. Uh, and this current winter is not shown, uh, but given that the winter isn't quite over yet, that's one reason I'm not showing it, but we are anticipating above average fawn survival rates for the tw this 2021 winter and average doe survival rates for the remainder of the year. In 2020, adult elk were estimated at 98% survival which is a little bit above the average of 94% um, gathered with the radio telemetry. This boom in recruitment for mule deer and high adult survival rates translates to a substantial increase in deer population size. The estimated percent change in Gunnison deer populations is very positive. Looking at now compared to last year, we have an approximate 25% increase in the deer population size. Compared to two years ago, we've increased 35%. And compared to three years ago, going into the winter of 2017, we've increased by about 50%. Finally, if you project into the future to the next year, making a few assumptions on harvest rate and um, survival rates, we will have increased by about 60 to 70% over four years. However, uh, just four to seven years ago, between 2014 and 2017, we were experiencing a moderate bust where population size decreased by about 25%. This was due to a stretch of declining winter fawn survival. And if in case you missed it uh, a few images ago, slides ago, here's that fawn survival rate uh, graph again shown in the red. And you can see this period of slipping fawn survival for that 2014 to 2017 period. If you look back across time, and not even that long ago, you'll see that the Gunnison deer population is best characterized by a boom and bust cycle. What happens if we let the population size continue to increase? Well, one of the major, uh, last major deer booms was followed by the severe winter of 07 and 08, during which more than 40% of the estimated deer herd perished. Now we try to keep our big game populations within the habitat's carrying capacity, particularly winter range. And there's a couple reasons for that. <clears throat> One is this idea of what happens in terms of competition amongst deer when over carrying capacity in a hard winter. In scenario one, this is what competition looks like when we manage the herd at or below carrying capacity during a hard winter event. <coughs> in this illustration, we only have three deer competing for the same patch of bitter brush poking out above the snow. The smaller, younger deer, deer will certainly still lose body condition and may or may not die, but because of moderate competition, the chance of survival for everyone is decent. Maybe a little bit below average, though. If the does make it out of the winter in good body condition, they will rear a pair of large twin fawns. In scenario two, this is what happens when you're about 33% over carrying capacity during a hard winter. Instead of three deer competing for the same single clump of bitter brush poking out above the snow, you have four deer competing with each other. As the hard winter progresses, these four deer are losing body condition. Um, there's less food to go around per animal. And as the food supply keeps diminishing, the weakest deer will die. Food supply will diminish some more, and even more deer will die. Now, coming out of the winter, we will have either less or maybe even the same number of deer make it through than in scenario one when we were managing below carrying capacity. However, in scenario one, the reason we were managing below carrying capacity is from active suppression of the population through hunting. And so, uh, in this scenario here, uh, we were essentially trying to stockpile deer ahead of the big winter. And, and this could be a bit wasteful. Furthermore, rather than those surviving, surviving does having a, those big healthy twins the next summer, the newborn fawns 
will actually be in poorer body condition and there will be fewer of them than normal. We observed this scenario of poor fawn production for two years following the hard winter of 0708. So not only is stockpiling deer um, ahead of a big winter wasteful, it can actually hurt the ability of the herd to bounce back. Basically, those excess deer are hurting the survival of other deer by consuming valuable plants before they perished. Once that animal is, is, is perished, uh, the resources that it's consumed are not going to be immediately recoverable for some time. So the second reason we need to curb the deer population is that during hard winter snow events, uh, deer come flooding down to the valley bottoms and hang out closer to the highways. Normally, deer don't like to graze the ditches of busy roads. Uh, the risk is just too high. But when a deer is starving and there isn't much food elsewhere, it's going to take that risk and feed near those busy high highways that it's been trying to avoid. The more deer utilize the highway rightaways, the higher the deer vehicle collision rate. This may only get worse here in Gunnison. Based on CDOT traffic data of our two busiest highways, the traffic volume is coincidentally um, increasing with the increase in deer population size. And so high deer population sizes and high vehicle population size uh, doesn't seem like a very good combination. So staff's proposed management actions to deal with this issue is to recommend an increase in deer licenses to the CPW Commission uh, for the fall 2021 hunting season. We are proposing a doe license quota of 670 for the gun two Gunnison DAUs with doe hunt codes available. Comparing this to last year's 2020 hunting season, we had about 140 total doe tags in these two DAUs, D22 and D25 which generated considerable demand of 385 and 285 first choice applicants in uh, D22 and D25 respectively. Uh, only those uh, residents with at least three preference points generally uh, could draw one of these tags. Now there are no doe hunt codes available in D21, but we will be potentially uh, proposing this for the 2022 hunting season down the road. Although bucks are not drivers of the population size, we're recommending buck tags to also increase to maintain the current buck ratio objective of 35 to 40 bucks per 100 does per the 2013 herd management plans. Thus, the proposed percent increase in buck licenses are as follows, uh, right in that 26 to 30 percent range. And it's important to know that these percent increases in proposed tag numbers are driven by the high production rates that we are ascertaining from several independent metrics, not even population models. Two other notes about the recommendations is this. Uh, the increase in rifle buck tags is to be allocated proportionally greater during the second rifle season. And this greater allocation towards second rifle season was due to anticipated higher than average harvest success rates in those later 2021 season dates that Colorado will be having this next fall. Given that the percent increase we are experiencing right now in Gunnison deer, it is likely that these 2021 harvest prescriptions will not turn the trajectory of these populations, but only slow the rate of increase. If the deer population continues to perform well, then license increases may be needed to be proposed in the future as well. As for elk, the recommendations to the CPW Commission is essentially status quo licenses in E5 and E43, but a decrease in elk license quotas in E25 of about 19% uh, in bulls and a decrease of 9% in the cows. And this is because the bull-cow ratio has been declining the last few years in E25, and we need to push that bull ratio back to the objective established in the 2017 E25 herd management plan. Also, in the fall 2020 hunting season, elk harvest success rates greatly exceeded CPW's expectations based on the three-year average harvest success rate that we used going into that season. So to conclude, these license recommendations will be de decided upon at the May 5th and 6th, 2021 CPW Commission meeting in Grand Junction. A more detailed list of the proposed licenses by hunting season or hunt code can be found at this link here. With that, uh, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in, and I hope to uh, be able to do this presentation again next year. Thank you.